Okay, so we are using a Taylor series on the FPGA to approximate a sine wave. And I'm only taking this at uh, integral um, integral degrees, so 0 through 360 included. And what we've done is we're using the symmetry of everything to, um, so it's 0 to 180 degrees and then it becomes minus 180 to zero. So basically we're taking x from zero to 360. If it's greater than 180, then we subtract 360 from it to get over onto the negative half. So let's talk about this a second. You see this glitch here in the middle of the uh, screen. Uh, I'll re -quick, very quickly change this over to I have two bit files here. So the first one I just described. And when I run this one, I'm doing something similar. But you notice no glitch in the middle. So what are we doing here? Well, we want to remember that what sine and cosine really are are a description of where we are on a unit circle, um, our distance away from the two axes. So that's this, and when we roll this around and keep going many degrees, we see this bouncing up and down as we go many degrees out in space, and we end up with this. So this is a sine wave, and from here we can see there are four quadrants that are very symmetric, you can choose your symmetry, left to right, top to bottom, even uh, uh, quadrant 3 to quadrant 1. Or is that 4? I don't remember. Anyway, we see the same symmetry here. The black line here is the, uh, say, a perfect sine wave, even though my drawing is nowhere near perfect. And then the red is the Taylor approximation. It comes off, it's really good right in, in these areas here. Uh, it deviates a little around this axis, around the center, but then it gets kind of crummy out here on the edges. So what we were doing before was we were coming along and we said do 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 and we start getting crummy. And then we switched over here to this half to draw it over there. And we got the crummy again, and this is why we got the glitch in the middle. So the second one, what we've done is we've taken advantage of the symmetry and we start out for uh, our degrees is 0 to 90. We come up the slope here and then when we get to 180, we realize that, oh, well, this piece of this curve is just a symmetric fold of this. So now I can say x minus 180. So if I'm at 180, I'm at 0. If I'm at 91, I'm right here. So I'm working my way back down the curve, and that puts me to here. Now when I go from 180 degrees to 270 degrees, I subtract 180 from x. So if x is equal to 180, I'm at 0. If x is at 270, I'm at this point. And I flip the signs while I'm at it. So I'm really actually working up and down this slope, but I'm flipping it on, on symmetry on this axis as I do it. So I come back down here and then for 270 to 360 I work my way right back up this side. So I'm staying away from the uh, non-uniformities. <coughs> Excuse me. So I'm staying away from the discontinuities where things get bad and because I'm working inside this area where the curve is good, things are awesome. Of course this is kind of a silly way to do this if all I'm doing is the 0 to 360 uh, integers because uh, it uses up 33% of my FPGA. So nearly a third of my FPGA is soaked up just computing sine in uh, layers of multiplies and adds. <coughs> using, uh, using fixed point, by the way. So uh, this is no good of a way to do it if you only needed those integer points. But it may be, maybe not, a very good way of doing it if you need to get, you know, down in fractional areas inside uh, less than, you know, say 1.5 degrees or something like that. 
uh, because the way this is set up right now, it does it in a clock tick, but I don't know how slow my clock has to be. So anyway, that's where that's at, and we'll call it good day.